Hello, my name is Camilio. I'm, um, I'm from Singapore and I'm currently a PhD student in Prof Nam Jun Cho's group here in NTU. So I'd first like to share a bit of background about myself in this video. Then I'll share a bit of uh, a bit of the work that I'm doing here, uh, part of my PhD project, and also some future plans that I have. So first, um, how did I get here? So why am I doing research? So I think uh, as I was growing up, I think I was always interested in science. And uh, one fond memory that I have is uh, watching Star Trek as a kid. And that really inspired me. Uh, it wasn't like watching that show uh, made me decide then and then to do research as a career. But I think it did show me that uh, scientific advancements can be beneficial to society, uh, such as uh, improving transportation and medicine. So when I got to university here in NTU, I chose to study MSc, Material Science and Engineering, as I thought it was a really practical and interdisciplinary field of study where uh, knowledge translates to the development of new materials and devices that uh, can benefit society in a tangible way. And although I wasn't formally trained in biology in high school, uh, I was interested in the concept of biology interfacing with material science. And I thought studying biomaterials would be a good soft introduction to the biomedical sciences. So it was here in NTU where I experienced research life. Um, to my mind, the best way to, to develop uh, new materials and devices would be, I think, to, to do research and create new materials. So whatever opp research opportunities that I found, I just applied for it. So the first was uh, Eureka, NTU's undergraduate research program. And I also applied for internship at DSO National Laboratories. So these two research experiences were challenging, but uh, also um, enriching, I think, and made me seriously consider pursuing research further as a career. So um, it was around that time when I first met Prof Cho and the members of the ETS group, uh, who were then called TSG. Uh, actually, he uh, I met him because he sent me an email inviting me to do uh, my FYP, final year project, with him. So uh, it was my first bio-related uh, research project involving model cell membrane platforms and surface-sensitive analytical techniques. And he also introduced me to this uh, concept of an equally strong emphasis on fundamentals and application, which I think all together sat really well with me uh, in terms of the kind of research I would like to do. Um, what particularly struck me uh, when I first met the ETS group was this uh, great warmth that I sensed from everyone. Uh, there was this very good collaborative spirit as well, because uh, in this office, we would have uh, PhD students and postdocs all sitting together and we can just turn around and ask a question and uh, everyone would contribute their own uh, ideas into the discussion, uh, which I think uh, uh, encourage people to, to uh, ask questions and discuss and learn from each other. And there was also this sense of uh, this drive to work really hard from everyone and everyone really wanted to work hard to improve themselves. So I think of this combination of a great group environment, uh, the spirit of translational research, as well as uh, lots of encouragement from both Prof Cho and the ETS group members that made me ultimately decide to do a PhD here. So now I'd like to share a bit about the work that I'm doing here in ETS, uh, my PhD project. So my main research topic is broadly based on using material science concepts to understand and control protein adsorption behavior. So protein adsorption is a very common process involved in various biotechnological applications, such as medical implants, biosensors, and nanomedicine, where proteins in solution adsorb non-covalently onto solid surfaces. So the accumulation of uh, many adsorbed protein molecules onto a uh, surface forms a protein coating layer. And it is this layer that interfaces with its environment 
to bring about a specific biological response, whether in vitro or in vivo. And so broadly, the goal is to understand and ultimately engineer this protein biointerface in order to get a specific biological response. So generally, when proteins adsorb, they attach onto the surface and then undergo denaturation or spreading. The deadsorption behavior of proteins, such as adsorption amount and the extent of unfolding and spreading, is closely linked to the protein's conformational stability. So the main idea of this framework is that if we can control the protein's uh, conformational stability through material science concepts, uh, then we can control the way proteins adsorb, and that could give insights into engineering improved protein coating applications. So I would now like to share an example of how this can be applied using a common protein, bovine serum albumin or BSA. So BSA is a widely used protein uh, used to passivate surfaces or in other words to coat surfaces with an inert protein layer and to prevent a specific biological attachment. However, a quick search on the web shows that there are over 40 different kinds of BSA being sold by Sigma Aldrich, a popular chemical vendor, uh, each having its own different processing conditions due to the different existing purification strategies uh, that exist out there today. So using this material science framework, we hypothesize that BSAs that have undergone different processing would have different properties, that is, the different adsorption behaviors, and that would result in different service passivation performances. So in the study uh, that we recently published in Nature Communications Materials, uh, we extensively characterized uh, six BSA types that differ based on the fractionation method used and whether or not an additional fatty acid removal step was conducted. Uh, this led to the conclusion that the presence of fatty acids in BSA increased its conformational stability, uh, reduced the adsorption amount, and also reduced the extent of surface spreading. Uh, we also confirmed uh, that this resulted in poorer surface passivation performance uh, using both in vitro and biological assays. So therefore, the implication uh, from this study is that fatty acid-free BSAs would be the preferred type of BSA uh, to use for service passivation, uh, blocking or anti-fouling, given that they absorb more and undergo greater spreading and thereby form a more complete uniform coating layer. Now, interestingly, despite BSA's widespread use, uh, this criterion for using fatty acid-free BSA for uh, superior anti-fouling coatings has never been clearly advised before uh, or backed by strong experimental evidence in any articles or the websites of stores selling BSA. So this is just one example of how this framework can be used to deepen our understanding of protein adsorption, uh, improve the performance of specific protein coating applications and how it benefits the scientific community. So uh, we can see just uh, how one benefit of this framework is how broad it is. And so we can actually use this framework to uh, and, and apply it to different proteins, uh, different environments, and different coating uh, applications. So looking ahead, uh, I would like to continue doing research on proteins, um, focusing on translating fundamental concepts that I've learned uh, to design protein-based nanoparticles and address existing clinical needs. Um, I think computational protein design capabilities uh, that are uh, developing rapidly right now. And I think it's really interesting that we can design proteins from scratch now. And I'd be very interested to learn more about that and to use it in future. Uh, overall, I think I'm very fortunate to be able to learn from and work with this incredible research team uh, that Prof Joe has built. Uh, this team that has advised and uh, mentored and encouraged me uh, all throughout my throughout the few years that I've been here. So uh, before I end this video, I'd like to thank Prof Cho and every member in the ETS group for contributing to my learning and growth as a researcher as well as a person. Um, I'd also like to thank the organizers of AKC for making this conference possible. And I think uh, creating this uh, good, great platform 
uh, allowing us to connect and learn from each other. Um, thank you very much for your attention and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the conference.